Hi, it's Brice from Atelier Designer and Forcing Architecture Studios. In today's video, I want to share with you some exploration I've done between AI and between motion real-time rendering. Uh, I wanted to see if you could use AI and more specifically stable diffusion and control net to actually replace twin motion in a final image for a project. Um, so I'll go through like the pro and cons of each of the options using twin motion versus using AI and AI versus twin motion. Um, and then at the end of this video, I'll give you a, a conclusion of what I believe the, where the technology sits now at that stage. So to start this video, I wanted to just talk first about twin motion. Twin motion is actually amazing software. Um, it's user friendly, it's very easy to learn and you can really have like a, a great quality of images very, very quickly. Um, when you consider like ren real time rendering, you think about Unreal as the go to, but Unreal could be like very overwhelming and quite hard to learn. So twin motion is a really interesting step towards real time rendering. Um, and the interface that um, Epic Game put together is actually really, really well done. Um, there is a great library with a lot of different features, different plants, um, different people, different way of like just populating your scene. I love the brush with like the greenery and the grass and I think this is extremely powerful. There's also some really great quality um, features such as like you can export images, video, fixed image and videos very quickly from Twinmotion. Um, another very good feature is the link with Revit and Rhino. So you could actually design in Rhino or design in Revit and have that sort of link into Twinmotion where you can have this live link when you realize you forget a couple of things in Twinmotion, you can go back to Revit or Rhino, edit your model and then sync back to Twinmotion. So there's this like um, very fascinating workflow between Twinmotion and Revit or Rhino. Um, and this is for me a very, very good point uh, for Twinmotion. Um, and other things is you can really play with the conditions, the climate, uh, the temperature, the, 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 if it's winter, summer, and then sort of all your assets will evolve and change according to the season, which is quite uh, phenomenal. Um, you can also have access to a great uh, external library such as Sketchlab or Megascan uh, for free where you can really download some model with like way more accurate um, accurate sort of uh, geometries. Um, it's also free to, to download and use uh, unless it's for commercial projects. Now some of the con of uh, Twinmotion I personally find is you can really get bogged down very quickly on trying to remold the old village or the old parts because it's so exciting. It's like a video game, you're in and you add the trees and you add these little walls and you can really spend a lot of time trying to refine your model on things you might never seen on your rendering. And I say that because I spend a lot of time um, in that sort of space um, and so I feel it, it could be like you can get a bit lost in that sort of word and then you render this video and you, you realize how much time you spend in area that no, no one will see or care. Um, another thing that I found quite tricky is like sort of the visual aspect you can very quickly see um, when it has been done by by twin motion or even unreal there is like this sort of um plasticity i guess or like this aesthetic um that is very specific to real-time rendering which really i love but i think i saw a lot of it and i feel like i'm just ready for some new aesthetic um and that's where i found like ai and uh, photography like like images that comes from from AI when think about mid journey or even like stable diffusion, there is this really quality of life that light that is actually stunning, um, and I believe there is a new aesthetic coming there that could be really interesting to capture in renderings in architecture because I feel this is sort of the next step. 
Um, so if we compare Twin Motion with Stable Diffusion, I found Stable Diffusion could have like some really nice quality of images, uh, almost photographic style. Um, the reflection uh, on the water or even on the sky or even on the glass could be quite stunning with Stable Diffusion. Um, the lights is always something that surprised me in the output of, of those images. Um, and um, I found with Control Net there is like this opportunity to use uh, renderings or like not renderings but maybe more screenshots from Rhino or from Revit that you could actually import into Stable Diffusion to start generate images based on that specific model. So you have that control um, of the AI which is super exciting in terms of uh, what could come next from there. Um, and I think another thing that I found quite fascinating it is, you know, in Stable Diffusion, for example, you can batch like a couple of images. So if you feel your prompt looks like it's heading in the right direction, all what you need is sort of different iteration to see how the model will eventually uh, come up with a couple of ideas. That's where, you know, you can batch a couple of images go away and come back and then you have like 20 images to come to, to pick from and this is quite amazing because then you can really go through the selection and select what you like um, and you don't really sort of get bogged down on other aspects that will not be part of the image. So now when you think about the con for stable diffusion I think there is this sort of challenge around the prompt, getting the prompt right, tweaking the, the prompt, going back and forth and trying different different way to, um, to, to get the right prompt for the right image. And I think when it comes from the last image of your rendering, when you've done this project, you've done the study, you're ready, all what you want is a, a render of your final ideas, it's very hard because you have this idea in mind and you try to control the AI to actually generate that idea and I think it's quite hard with a prompt to tweak um, another thing despite the fact that you have control net and you still have control on the geometry and you get the output you want I feel there is still room where the model will test stuff that you really don't want so it's it's coming with like some something that could be surprisingly nice in terms of light in terms of uh, visuals in terms of reflection but on the other hand you will sort of end up with like some weird stuff that you you, you don't really want or you're not expecting to to have um, so I find it very challenging to use stable diffusion at the end of the process when you already have like a great idea of what you want and sort of see where does that goes um, I also find quite exhausting this process of selection uh, what it make? What is a good image? What is a bad image? And how do you go back and forth from from there? To conclude, I believe that AI from Stable Diffusion using Control Net is not quite there for a final visual, um, for a client meeting, or for like a novel final result of your project. However, I feel it's super helpful during early stage pros process when you start testing ideas, try to play with the material, the combination. I think it can bring a lot to the process, to the discussion with the team, uh, with the client and, and, and also like, you know, produce some, some visual that can show that combination. So I think this is very powerful at early stage process, but I don't think it's really quite ready yet for final render in an architecture sort of competition or for the client. Um, I still believe like twin motion and real-time rendering or Unreal are the way to go. Just because yes, you might spend some time um, populating that 3D, modeling, putting the material the right scale and all those type of things. But I believe like if you want to, to get like a couple of shots out of these scenes, you can actually sort of have more image out of one single model and that's quite powerful you can also do do videos uh, which would be really hard to do with ai so you've got like that model that you can use to actually leverage and 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 do a lot of 
production images out of that. You can also navigate through this this model, so you could run run it with the clients. So it's just sort of a, a full different word that is hard to compete with, I, I believe. Um, however, when it comes from like single image, I do believe that there might be something maybe in a couple of maybe in a year time and maybe in a couple of months where you could really sort of merge if it's like for one single image like merge a bit of AI and a bit of twin motion so like sort of layering uh, things in uh, Photoshop um, and maybe using some of the tool to actually get the feel of that um, image or like that realistic image from AI but also having like that sort of aesthetic you want and the out the output you want that's it for today thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i would love to hear from you in the comment below on if you used ai for a project and final project and you show it to the client and it was exactly what you you produced in your in your 3d model i would love to see if you prefer using real-time rendering than ai or if you sort of think about merging both of them or use photoshop to actually combine those two um, and if you want more of those uh, videos and tutorial about ai architecture computer design uh, make sure you subscribe uh, you like and comment that video thanks again for watching and i see you in the next video ciao